Yeah, it was uh, in college, UCLA. It was move-in day for fall quarter. And there was just tons and tons of boxes. It was just piles and piles and piles of boxes everywhere. And I was like, man, that's pretty unsightly. I've always been very sustainability focused. And, um, you know, I thought, well, there's got to be something better than this. And so I just typed in in Google, like, uh, rent moving boxes. And I found there was a company in Canada called Frogbox. And I thought that was such a cool idea. You just basically get boxes delivered to you. And then there are these plastic crates, basically, with the lids attached. And um, and then you pack them, you move, and somebody comes and takes them away. I was like, what a great idea. Why don't I start something like this? Because there's nothing like that where I could find it during that time. Okay, so somebody was doing it in Canada, Frogbox. Mm -hmm. And instead of being discouraged which you know is was sometimes be my reaction like oh i come up with this great business idea uh you know of course google it and then like oh somebody else is already doing that <laughs> like be like yeah. well back to the drawing board like no 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 well maybe in this case they're doing it in a separate area and say okay i could bring this idea to california yeah that's that's the thing is like these kinds of businesses it's like it's just like a coffee shop like if you go to this really cool shop or restaurant and there's nothing like that where you live you can duplicate it you can make it your own now if it was like if i was selling these boxes and i was like i'm just going to sell these boxes well i probably would be out of business because there's much larger companies doing that who have greater uh, you know can take on smaller margins and have greater exposure and but this is something that's very localized. Thing. yeah yeah, it's very localized, right? Like, they're not going to deliver boxes to your door from Canada to California. Yeah. And so this was something that, you know, my hometown in Sacramento, California, there is no company that does what we do. Even today, I don't know of any. That's their primary line of business. Now, it has caught on. Some movers are like offering this to their customers. Yeah. But we are the primary offering here. And I want to highlight too, even if there is somebody else doing it, like, if there's there's room for more than one sushi restaurant in town yep. there's you know if, if you have a decent population there's there's a little room for healthy competition and mm -hmm. you can think about other ways to differentiate yourself aside from just the the product but in this case it was somewhat of a uh, of a blue ocean but then the next question is like is there any demand for this like did did moving customers know that this was an option or is there a little like market education that has to happen you know, Nick, even today, after 10 years in business, I still get calls and emails like, why haven't I heard from you guys before? I didn't even know this existed. So <laughs> obviously, we could do a little bit of a better job, I guess, of publicity. And this just goes into the fact that, you know, it is a side gig. I contribute maybe three hours a week to it, probably could do more. But we have a consistent stream of customers. And we're at this point, we have the biggest groups that come to us, biggest cut clients is return clients and people finding us from referrals and uh, Google. So, so fortunately, our Google search is working well. They search rent moving boxes in Sacramento or any of the outlying suburbs. Yeah. They're probably gonna find us. We're on that first page. And um, we have relationships with a lot of uh, interior designers and organizing companies out here. So that, that's kind of like our niche, is if they're working with a client who wants to redo their kitchen or have a have a uh, organize their whole house well they got to pack it all up because they have to redo it and they like to use our boxes because they're eco-friendly they're er ergonomic they're useful and they can stay on site for a couple of weeks so what was the first move here so you google rent moving boxes you find this competitor in canada um, for some level of validation and then you just go to home depot and order up a bunch of those like i'm picturing like the giant tupperware bin type of things yeah, it's funny you say that because that's exactly the first thing that I did is I went to, I think it was Lowe's, and they have like these big black, you know how like people store their Christmas decorations in yeah, their garage? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Our attic yeah. is full of these things, yeah. Yeah, so it's like I thought that's what you should use because I didn't know where else to buy them. I was just like, oh, I'm just going to start this business. Why not? I was 23 years old. <laughs> and so um, I bought like five, and I was like, well, it's kind of a lot of money. Maybe I should do a different business. And then I kind of hemmed and hawed for a couple of weeks on it. I returned them. And I Googled, like, uh, I think I reached out to a competitor in Texas. It's like, where do you guys get your boxes? And they're like, oh, there's this company in Florida, Nevada, called Reusable Transport Packaging. They're one of the companies that sell. They're kind of like a U-line where they sell all kinds of various business products, like uh, forklifts and dollies and trays and tape sure. and all kinds of stuff. So 
these companies sell boxes like this in a bulk inventory. You can't just buy one or two. You need to buy 50, 100, 500 boxes. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, I'm going to go in with both feet and make the investment and see what happens. How do you remember how much it was or how many boxes you got? Yeah, I initially ordered, um, I think, 50, and it was close to $2,000 with delivery. Yeah, because you can't do this with just five. Like people got more than five boxes worth of stuff. Like it's got to be, yeah, you got to yeah. have enough to hold a, uh, a house or an apartment's worth of belongings. Right. Yeah, and that, I quickly found that out is that, you know, clients would consistently ask, especially after we got established after a couple of years, they would want 100 boxes. And that's especially true for when we started to do office moves. So a lot of law firms or whatnot want to move offices. They want 100 boxes. Mm -hmm. And so that's when we had to start ordering more. And then the nice thing, too, is these boxes last over 100 moves, yeah. right? So we're not ordering new boxes every month or even every year. It's maybe every couple of years to refresh our inventory. Okay, so you're a couple grand into it. You got 50 boxes. Where do you where do you put them? Like, is there, is there room in your garage for this stuff? No, I wish. There Initially, there was. First month was there. I then got a storage unit so that I could, because, you know, sometimes people want to pick up the boxes. I don't want people coming to my house sure. and picking up boxes, you know. I think it was like $80 a month to okay. rent a storage unit for my boxes. And then after that, when we started to get a little busier, um, I had I actually had moved to Denver. And I said, okay, well, I don't want to shut down the business, but I want to move to Denver for this job. So I reached out to a moving company. Um, and this is one of the craziest things I've ever done. He's one of the, this guy, he owns a moving company out here. He's one of the top rated movers in Sacramento. And uh, I explained that he had referred some customers to me and I had reached out to him like, hey, tell your customers about our boxes. And I said, hey, I have this crazy idea. You want to go into business together? Everyone that you bring to me and you take care of the delivery, I'll handle the, the clients and we'll, we'll, we'll share the revenue. And I went into business with somebody I'd spoken on the phone, but I'd never actually met, which I thought was the craziest thing anybody could do. But... I did it and we continue to grow. But this solves your logistics problem of, you know, having to meet customers at the place. Like maybe the moving company can keep them at their facility. You know, they can handle that delivery yeah. since they're going to be you know, moving th those belongings anyways. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. They moved all the boxes to their uh, warehouse area. And so that basically took care of rent and reduced our expenses. Um, and so when they would have a move, they would just, you know, take our boxes with their moving truck, deliver them and then go do another move. And so it's very strategic kind of how they do it. But some customers do still pick them up. Do you remember your first booking and, and how that person found you? Was it still like trying to get on moving companies preferred vendor list or, you know, was it early Google ranking? Talk to me about the first couple bookings where you're like, oh, I'm slowly going to start to recoup this initial uh, startup cost. Yeah. So it's funny enough. Um, my, our website initially was very clunky. Um, I had, a, I had one of our interns at the first job I was at, I paid him 50 bucks to make our website. So there wasn't a way to book it like there is now. Um, and so the first, I actually started off marketing on Craigslist. So on Craigslist, there's a section where it says services offered, right? Or like, you know, you need some help with something. So I put on there rent moving boxes, right? Super, super sketchy. But I said, well, it's free. <laughs> there's no harm in this because I don't have to pay a search engine. I don't have to put out Facebook ads or anything like that. We should, so we should pause, you know, 10 years ago, Craigslist was a different landscape than it is today. Right? Yeah. So it, it was a different era of the internet. It was right. I mean, that's where you, I mean, I found a tennis partner on their roommates. I sold my car. Like it's not, <laughs> it was used much more then I feel like than it is now. Yeah. And maybe today uh, you could do a similar tactic on Facebook marketplace. Cause that's where I went to look for moving boxes for our recent move where it's like, right. you know, and people are giving them away and like, okay, we'll go pick these up. It, it, so you're exactly right. Right. Like people give stuff away. It's easier. It's more community feel. You have a more trustworthiness there. So but back then, I just had no inhibition. I was like, yeah, I'll just go on. And I couldn't believe that we got an email from somebody that was like, yeah, I want to rent these. I want to try these out. And it was a woman living in an apartment, like a senior apartment in a not so great part of town. And so I took this intern with me. Um, one of the box, we, we rented a truck from Home Depot, like those $19 per hour trucks, because I don't know what else to do. Oh, sure. And one of the boxes actually flew out on the freeway. <laughs> oh, no. 
So we learned that we need to close the lids and tie them down. Who would have thought mm -hmm. they could fly out? And so we grabbed that, got back on track, and we went to this woman and delivered the boxes and was like, yeah, so we'll be back in a week to pick them back up. Okay. And so she was just doing an in-town move? Yeah. She was moving from her one-bedroom apartment from north the northern part of town to a one-bedroom apartment on the southern to the southern part of town. So it was just her and her cat. And she was a great fan. And we learned, you know, the one thing about the negative about this business, Nick, is that think about it, you're renting stuff out, but it's, which means you get it back, hopefully. Yeah. So the things hopefully. you have to look out for is, are you getting all your boxes back? Are they damaged? And are they clean like they should be? Sometimes you'll find like pet hair, human hair, sprinkles, all kinds of stuff in the boxes mm. after people have done moving. And you have to make sure that it's clean and sanitized for the next customer. So right. the not so luxurious part of this business. No, that makes sense. What does it cost to rent these things out? How do you figure out pricing? So that that's where the competition really helps, right? Is that you look at what other people are charging in other cities. And so there's companies now in Southern California, Bay Area, Texas, Arizona, even Colorado. Okay. And so you see what they're charging. And so what we did is basically just kind of test out the market, right? So we wanted to have a higher margin to make up for the lower volume. And so we started to increase our prices and we would still get, you know, people that would, they wouldn't say there's maybe a few people per year that are like, you know, that's a lot of money, $400 to rent boxes. I don't know if I want to do that. But most people really don't bat an eye because they see that if I'm paying movers $2,000 or $3,000 to pack up and move my house, you know, I don't have to go because they're going to charge too to bring you boxes and tape them up and build them up and sure. dispose of them and everything. And so we figured out pricing just from trial and error and also just looking at what the competition nationally was charging. Okay. So on the pricing page at calboxrental.com, it looks like it's kind of a combination of how many do you need and how long do you need them? So like 50 right. boxes for a week, it gives you plenty of time to pack everything up, move it across yep. town. And you got to do local moves because it's like if you're moving to Seattle, like, oh, whoa, 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 I need my boxes back. So it's got to be in town moves. So your moving company partner can bring them back to headquarters or you can go pick them up and take them back to the, the storage unit. Yep, that's exactly right. And we we do quite actually, we've had a few people that moved. We, Sacramento has been a hot spot for people from the Bay Area to move to because it's much cheaper, especially after the pandemic. So we actually had people that said, I want to rent your boxes and I'll drop them off to you once I move to the Bay Area, once I move to Sacramento. So if they move to Sacramento, they would drive here, pick mm -hmm. up our boxes, go home, pack. And once they move here, we'd either pick them up or they drop them back off. So I will say it's very, um, it's just a culture, I guess. People are big into sustainability in different parts of the country and want that zero waste. And there's that brand awareness out there. There's a great company in the Bay Area called Zipgo. Um, they do what we do. They rent out these boxes. And sometimes they're like, yeah, I wish we could like give our boxes to somebody and they move up there and then you take them and we somehow get them back. So there is a logistical issue, obviously, if you rent them out. So long distance moves are not our strong suit, but everything else is. Got it. Okay. And then if somebody is sitting on these, maybe it's a corporate relo and it, it needs to go into storage for a minute, and, but now you're, I guess you're charging them every week. So you're still making money on that inventory, but it kind of limits the, the booking requests that come in to say, we'll, we'll shoot that inventory is tied up uh, right now. Yeah. You know, it, it's, we've had that we've had, and especially it's the corporate moves and those, those renovation projects is they're like, okay, we'll have it. We want to rent it for two weeks, two weeks turns into three weeks to four weeks. Mm -hmm. We've had a customer that rented it for almost two months and yeah, it does tie up the inventory, but from what I see it as they're paying it, we could have had a customer that week. We could have not. And if we do, yeah, I do have to say really sorry, we're booked up. And that creates a, wow, there's a, there's a, it's like kind of that wait list phenomenon. Like, oh, I want it even more now. So maybe yeah. I'll, I mean, I've had people that honestly, they've delayed their move date or delayed their escrow or closing their, their lease on their apartment because like, I'll wait till you're ready. I mean, that's mm -hmm. like music to any business owner's ears, right? Yeah. Is you have to turn away a customer, but you're creating that scarcity effect in, inadvertently, right? But you're still creating it. And now they want to come back and like, they'll change themselves to work with you. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I mean, it's, 
yeah, the, the inventory is making money, so it's fine. How many boxes do you have now? Um, close to a thousand. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's more than I expected. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cause like, I mean, so you, got plenty, you got plenty of capacity. Yeah. Most boxes, most rentals are like a hundred or 200 boxes. And wow. sometimes we have two or three at a time. Okay. Yeah. It makes sense. So you gotta be able to fill, fill yeah. that demand. Wow. And it's also a lot cheaper to order a lot at once so that you're not paying additional shipping and logistic fees. And also if some boxes break or whatever, like you have the rest of that. Got it. Got it. Okay. So starting out marketing on Craigslist, you know, renting, renting the uh, pickup truck from Home Depot to deliver these things. Um, and then eventually it sounds like you're moving, you know, even though this is a hands-on local based business, you're moving several states away, halfway across the country to, to Colorado. And, and yet the business is still able to operate thanks to this uh, moving company partnership. Can you play that card you know, with multiple different moving companies, like you sprinkle that inventory around. So like if uh, to, to cast a wide net here, or what's, what's the play? You know, I, the funny thing is like when we were new and even, even once we were like a couple years into business, moving companies did not like us. And the reason is a lot of moving companies already want to sell boxes to their customers, cardboard boxes, right? Yeah. So in essence, if we were partnering with them, we're drawing their attention away. We're taking revenue from them. The way I approached it with them was like, it's not, you know, obviously you can present the choice, but if they want to rent, obviously it's going to be financially lucrative to you because you're helping them get what they want, right? Giving your customers options is always a good idea, but that it wouldn't really be logistically possible because I mean, to coordinate with several different people. I mean, a one person can't can't do all that. And I honestly think that our service radius is a pretty good amount. It's about 25 miles in Sacramento. Yeah. And we still service outlying areas. We just charge additional for delivery. So we still are able to do that. And Steve, my business partner, is just an incredible human who's very flexible. He's on top of things. And he's the only person I can really trust to do it. What was the pitch? It was like, we'll, we'll split revenue 50-50. We'll, it sounds like... <sighs> Because after a few of these, my the, the entrepreneurial spidey sense has got to go off and be like, well, maybe I should just buy my own boxes. If, <laughs> why am I sharing revenue with this guy? I'm doing all the work. Yeah. No, it's true. I mean, and I thought of that too, but I, and I said, do you want to buy the company from me? Yeah. He's like, you know, I want to get a, I want to get out of the moving business. And he's been mm -hmm. saying this for a while. So <laughs> um, he's like, no, I don't, I don't want to, you know, really do that. And he doesn't want the... He, I, I guess he just really doesn't want the hassle of doing it. But to be honest, that's another thing somebody could have done. I think there was another company actually in Sacramento. There was two. One was called U-Box, I think. They went out of business, mm. you know? And so it's just a matter of like, people think it's a great, you know, they see it in concept. Oh, he's doing it. I can just do it. It's a simple concept. Yeah. But there's an execution involved. And also I have very low overhead. So it's like once you buy the boxes, the arrangement that we have is that, you know, I pay hosting for the website. I pay for, um, you know, split, splitting the revenue, cleaning the boxes, uh, delivery, all of that comes through only when we have a client. If, if I don't have a customer for a whole month or two months, I'm not paying anything. There's yeah. no expenses other than the website, right? There's yeah. no utilities, there's no rent, there's no employees, there's nothing. So we can withstand, um, you know, dry spells. Got it. Got it. If you get a booking request that is independent of the moving company partner, does he still have to go and deliver those boxes? Yep. yep. Our delivery guy does everything, whether they come through that lead source, any lead source. So most of our leads are coming from Google referrals, previous customers and interior um, remodeling specialists. Okay. Yeah. There's once you start kind of listing these off, think of just, you know, oh, my lease is up, I'm, I'm moving or my, you know, I changed jobs. So I'm moving to a different area but there's a lot of different occasions where you might need to pack up stuff. And I guess we did it last year with the, with the kitchen remodel. It's like, I guess we got to you know, move everything out, you know, and it's like, Oh gosh, there's a lot of stuff here. And so yeah. all these different occasions where people might be in the market for something like this and kind of looking for those strategic partnerships. I love the interior designer angle. That's one I never would have thought of, but yeah, that makes sense. 
Yeah, and we kind of fell into it by accident. We had um, somebody reach out to us saying, oh, I, I didn't even know. Another one that was like, I don't know you guys existed. Why didn't I know about you before? Yeah. And she introduced us. There's apparently there's like meetups of interior designers and there's like there's like these conventions for like organizers, which I would never have imagined. Yeah. And they have a lot of business. A lot of people have big homes and discretional, discretionary income. And they want to hire these people to make their pantries Instagram worthy. And, you know, what happens is that then translates into their office needs work. This needs work. Their kids new needs work. So whether they move, remodel, um, get a design work done, get any renovations done. And we also do a lot of retail stores now, which just was from accident. There was a store that sold auto parts, a very mom and pop store sold auto parts and machinery. And they were getting their floors redone. So they had to pack up everything off of their shelves and store it for two weeks while the fl floors got done. Mm -hmm. So they wanted our boxes because they thought the cardboard, everything's going to collapse. It's going to tear. It's not strong enough. Okay. And, you know, so there's just so much opportunity for using these boxes. That's not just for somebody moving from one house to another house. Gotcha. And did they find you through the website? They did. Okay. Was there anything specific that you did to help it in terms of local seo ranking i honestly just googled like how to improve your search rankings and um i use wix which i guess wasn't very recommended but it was cheap at the time and they had a package deal and so i just you know would put keywords on our home page and other pages and connect our socials one business owner gave me a suggestion to you should allow people to directly have a booking request on your website rather than sending you an email or calling. Yeah. Just put some, you know, form in there, how many boxes do you want, what do you want, all of that, and send it to you. And that's been heavily utilized as well. So um I'm really not sure what it is. I'm grateful for it. But you know, Wix too also has like an SEO checklist, like did you do this, did you do this, do this. So I've been working on that. I haven't hired anybody to do any of our website or technical stuff. Maybe I should, but it's been working so far. So far, so good. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, um, it, 10 years ago, I would have been really hesitant to recommend Wix from an SEO standpoint, just because a lot of their stuff was kind of, you know, dynamically loaded, hidden behind JavaScript in a lot of ways. But they right. have they, they have improved quite a bit. And by virtue of being one of the few players in town, it sounds like, hey, look, you know, eventually you're going to trickle to the top of Google just by virtue of of you know, word of mouth and, you know, the, the on-page factors that you do have in place here where it says, hey, you know, if you need moving boxes in Sacramento and you want to rent them, here we are. Yeah. Some of it is luck. Some of it is just doing what you can to be proactive about making sure you have the right content on your website. Now, how about the interior design? Like, it didn't sound like you went to this conference, but it sounds no. like you were proactive about building those relationships too. Yeah, it was um, this, once this first woman had reached out to us, she um, she was really nice. And she did like an we didn't have Instagram until about two years ago. We just had a Facebook page again. Didn't I've never done any advertising, really. And um, she's like, you need to get Instagram so I can put you guys on my story. So we created an Instagram Instagram page and um, and she did. And that was great. She's like, look at these boxes. Look how great they are. They're so easy, eco friendly. And she did a little spin on the on the dolly and. And, and her friends found, they're like, wow, where are these? Who's the owner? Where do I find them? So that's the power of the community here is that it's, it's, it's just like they trust each other. They lean on each other, even though they're in competition, right? They don't want somebody doing something that their clients are, think are really cool and they don't offer it or they don't know anything about it. So, um, I mean, we don't do a lot of moves with them, but we do a lot of, like I said, organizing projects. All right. This is Cal Box Rental on Instagram. We'll link that up. What kind of risks are associated with this business? I mean, it's, I think it's, it seems pretty straightforward. Like it's a it's a plastic box, but I don't know. Do you find any risk or liability here that people should be aware of? Yeah, it, it's a couple of things. I mean, one of the things that we did was, um, I mean, my, my first customer, we didn't have a, a rental agreement, right? So technically she could have just like kept the boxes or destroyed them and I would have no recourse. Right? She's like, I don't have any boxes. What are you talking about? But oh, fortunately, okay. she didn't do that. So um, it was after that, I was like, you know what? We should probably have something more than email to make sure customers are on the hook for this. So 
I went to, I think I went to the library and I looked up like, you know, those NOLO books and they have like how to write a contract. So I just Googled like how to have a rental contract and I would just put stuff in there that basically indemnified us for anything if they were, if the boxes were dirty, if they were, if they were late, how much we would charge them, if they got hurt or if there's the liquids in them, like we're not liable. So we basically made sure that the rental agreement had what are they renting, from what dates are they renting it, when are they due, and also payment information. So in the beginning days, we only took credit card. We had, you know, Square. It was like if I was go meeting them, you would slide the little thing on your smartphone. Yeah. But now you can enter it manually. And now we've gradually moved since Venmo does business now. We, we primarily try to do Venmo and just keep all our transactions there. Okay. We also take PayPal. Because the thing is, like, when I send a rental agreement to a customer, we don't have any fancy DocuSign or anything like that. They would have to enter in their credit card information onto the PDF and then send it back to me. And that's not very secure. Right. So most of the time, if they're really persistent on doing credit card, which usually they are if they're like a company because they want that the points and mm. all of that, is we would do it over the phone. So I would take their information over the phone. And then once their rental is complete, then I discard the information. Because one mistake I made was if somebody paid by credit card or whatever, and then they didn't return the, all of the boxes or they were damaged or something, I don't find out until somebody goes and cleans the boxes. So I would have to call them back and be like, we have to charge you this. And if they don't, if I don't have the information on file, I don't have as much leverage. Okay. How did you find that um, cleaner person? Is this like, you know, is this like a, a, an Airbnb short-term rental type of cleaner? I just <laughs> take a, take a pressure washer to these things or, you know, spray them out. No. So it's actually, um, so I used to do it. I used to do it most of the time. I mean, when I was, when I was here and then, you know, since I've been back, I've been doing it, but now in the last few years, it's the same guy who does our deliveries. Okay. It's, um, he's an employee of the moving company and, uh, you know, they have downtime. If they have one move or two moves a day, they're maybe done by three o'clock and he'll spend an hour or two cleaning the boxes and it's, it's, he doesn't charge much. Um, and it, but it is work, right? Because it's yeah. like, you have to clean each box inside and out. And the one of the sticky things literally Nick is that people leave their labels on these boxes. So fortunately oh, sure. <laughs> They'll say, like, they'll put painter's tape, which is great, right? You can just tear it right off. Yeah. But sometimes they'll put, like, you know, like, really adhesive stuff on these boxes, like office, kids' room, and those are hard to take off. So we now provide um, dry erase markers for our customers. If they request them, they can just write it on the boxes. And then if they forget to do it, it'll just come off while we clean them. Oh, interesting. So the dry erase will just, uh, just scrub off. Okay. Yeah. There's actually a pre-made smooth section of plastic, you know, on the boxes, on the side and on the top where they can put a label in. Like designed for uh, that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, on the other risks though, I would say that there, there is a concern that if a client, if a customer, you know, when you pick up your boxes, if you're not there doing it, you may not know because Let's say somebody returns their boxes. They're going to be in stacks of five, right? They're not going to have every box just out on its own because these are stackable. Yeah. So if they go back to the warehouse and let's say a few are cracked or there's some that are really dirty or have hairs or dirt or something, who knows what they moved, right? You have to go back to the customer and you have to make a decision because if you call them and say, I'm going to have to charge you a hundred dollars for cleaning or whatever, you're probably going to put a bad taste in the mouth. Well, I didn't do that or I don't remember that. And mm -hmm. now they may not write you a good review. They may not come back as a customer. They may not refer you. So you have to really play that, um, you know, accordingly. So I try to just judge it based upon my interaction with the customer. If it's one or two boxes that are dirty, I'm not going to charge them. But if it's a consistent amount, we're going to charge them. And also if they damage the boxes, we have to charge them. And this, the thing about that that's difficult is if I'm not there, if, if my business partner's not there and the, the delivery guy misses it, and let's say that that box that's already damaged goes to a new inventory. Yeah. Now that customer got something and I may have to charge them. So it's really making sure that we play our due diligence correctly to make sure that we're giving each customer clean, new, good shape inventory. So we don't run into this and we have a reminder on the rental agreement when their rent is, when their rental period is due, we also say, please make sure. You wipe down the boxes and they're all empty and all the labels are removed. Most people listen to that. Some people don't, which is why we just clean boxes after each rental. Sure. Got it. 
and you, you carry some sort of like general liability policy in case I, I don't know somebody cuts their hand open like it's, it's, it doesn't seem like there's a huge level of um, liability there but you never know yeah you never know and that's the thing is like you know I, I've toyed back and forth with you know uh, bundling this with the, an, another LLC or uh, but yeah, you definitely want to have um, business liability insurance because you never know. Let's say somebody, you know, hurt, like you said, hurts their hand on the box or, you know, they feel like they were charged for cleaning when it wasn't really dirty. So you just want to make sure you protect yourself in any case. I don't think this is a very high risk business at all. Yeah. Now, if we were like helping them pack and I had employees, then that's a different concern. But this is just them getting boxes delivered to their doorstep. They're then in their possession, and then we pick them up. Yeah, yeah. No, the, compared to some of the other uh, rental businesses that we were, you're renting out uh, cars on Turo, or we did an episode yeah. on renting out mobility scooters. Like, oh, you know, this thing had a mind of its own. It accelerated, and it you know drove me into a ditch. And yep. there's yep. other things that uh, you know would definitely you know check the box for having more uh, more liability uh, than. Uh, than a plastic tub. Yeah, you mentioned, an an object. <laughs> yeah, yes. You, you mentioned collecting reviews. Uh, this is going to be Google, Yelp, Facebook, any platforms that you've prioritized and anything proactive that you're doing to uh, collect those reviews from happy customers? Yeah, so I um, under my signature for our business email, I do have a link to both our Google page and also Yelp. So um, most of the time, customers will leave it on their own, but I do make an effort um, I think my uh, business partner told me about this app called Nice Job or something like that, where it sends the it sends like a couple of uh, texts to the customer. Hey, how was your okay. experience? Write a review. So I just have like a template that I just text to the customers through our auto, through our phone app. We use Google Google phone Google Voice. Okay. And so I would just ask them like, how was your experience? Like I would call them and say, hey, if it was good, like would you mind leaving us a review? Most people are happy to do that. Some people are just like, you did great. I'll refer you. I don't leave reviews. And sure. then some people that didn't have a good experience just don't answer me. <laughs> so they're just like, I'm not going to leave you a bad review, but I'm not going to talk about this anymore. Like, I just want to be <laughs> done with it, which is fine. Like, right, it's everybody's right. But we're really fortunate in the people that have done left reviews. I mean, we have a five star rating on Yelp and Google. Yeah. A clean five star rating, which is it's really I'm proud of that because after 12 years of business, right, you might have a disgruntled customer that was like, oh, they overcharged me their boxes are bad quality, they were late on their delivery, or, you know, these boxes aren't that great anyways, or whatever, right? But yeah. fortunately, like, it's been pretty clean. Yeah, it's like a law of large numbers is bound to happen after you serve, uh, you know, enough clients, somebody is bound yeah. to be unhappy. But yeah. you know, that's, that's great. I like this proactive follow up to say, hey, how how was your thing? And if you were, you know, giving me positive, would you mind just typing that same thing into the uh, review platform of your choice? That'd be great. Yeah, exactly. You mentioned it just takes a few hours a week to run. Where does your time go in the business these days? Yeah, honestly, Nick, it's just a matter of, um, you know, answering requests by email and phone. So I'll get a phone call, get a voicemail, I'll get an email and they'll be like, they'll have some questions. When can I get the boxes? How many boxes do I need? How big are the boxes, et cetera? And then I help them kind of create a rental agreement and I'll do the scheduling. So I'll connect with my business partner and then he gets the rental agreement. He contacts the customer when it's uh, they're able to deliver and that's basically it. And then during the deliveries, I have a I have a spreadsheet of you know who's renting what during what time, what do they do? So we make sure we get them back on time. And that's really about it. I also spend a couple of hours a week just on uh, creating those relationships in the industry. So if we worked with people in the past, like, what are you seeing today? You know, would you like to do a custom promo code together? Do you want to do a, do you want to collaborate on a social media post? Um, you know, we'll have like specials like uh, Spooktober, like this month, we're giving a free extra week of rental for anybody who rents with us. So we always just try to do something creative and and just try to connect with people um, and those who are centers of influence to make sure that they are aware of us still, that we are still around, and, and that we can work together. Got it. I, I was going to ask about the uh, the spreadsheet for inventory management because with a thousand boxes and people at different parts of town, you know, with different numbers of boxes, like that starts to be kind become a little bit of a logistical challenge, but it is just uh, just spreadsheet you kind of have an idea of which uh, you know how many are with which customer at what time and when they're supposed to come back 
Yeah, that's exactly right. It's just a matter of like, you know, like where are these boxes? When are they due? And and, and that's what we go based off. So if I get a, a rental request and I see that there's boxes due in a week, but they want them this weekend, I'll be like, well, they're not, we can deliver them as soon as, as this time. So I can see like which boxes are coming back when to make sure, because if a customer wants like, a hundred boxes, that's a lot harder to do if we are booked than mm -hmm. if they want 50 boxes. So, um, but usually at most of the time with the, with the level of boxes we have now, I mean, we're not a crazy, you know, million dollar company, right? So we usually have the ability to do that. We're, we're just the neighborhood box rental company here. <laughs> Is there a target revenue number or fulfillment metric? Like how many are being utilized at any given time? Like are there key metrics that you're tracking for this business? You know, it's just, did we do better than last year, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what it is for me. I mean, I, I, I mean, it should be more. And I know there's been people on this podcast and show that are really like running lucrative businesses. But for me, it this is not something that I can really scale nationally, right? Because it's very localized. And also a lot of people do it in other cities. And for me, I'm just happy doing like, this is a this is an experiment to me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like I was 23. I was like, what risk do I have? I want to say that I started a business. Yeah. And I wanted to combine it with my passion for sustainability and zero waste. So I started it. And this now, I mean, it pays for basically all of my fun money. You know, I don't have to worry about, oh, man, I can't join my friends out to eat or go on this trip or buy a new paddleboard or whatever I want to do. Yeah. Um, it pays for all of that. It's a side hustle. That's exactly what it is. And my hope is that it continues to grow so more people use it and and save save cardboard boxes and that, you know, maybe we can do something else. But I mean, we were recently in like a, a local magazine and we were also, um, there was a feature on us on Good Day Sacramento. Um, so, you know, we try to speak to good community partners and make sure that we, um, you know, just continue to do well. Were you doing any proactive PR outreach for that or they just somehow found you? They're like, hey, this is a cool story. I actually researched, there was a segment I saw in another local business. I was like, oh, they do that. They, that's a really cool segment they do. I mean, it's not a very... Um, it's not obviously a national audience like the Today Show or anything, but, yeah. you know, I reached out. I saw that there's a lady who had an email that did this, and I reached out to her, and we went back and forth a few times. So, you know, hopefully we have a chance to, to, to do something. I think a lot of local side hustles have this, you know, uh, PR play in their playbook because especially if it's you know, something that's a little bit, a little bit creative, a little bit different, like, you know, renting out moving boxes. It was like, oh, that's unique. Oh, you could turn that into a business. And they, they you know, these publications like to f feature, you know, local people and feel good stories. And yep. you know, they're kind of looking for angles like this, especially, oh, there's a st sustainability play or there's, there's some angle here that can weave into the story that they already want to tell. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, you know, local, local businessman, you know, does good or local side. Hustle. It's kind of, you know, how can you tap into what they're already looking to talk about. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like we have a really good community magazine. It's called style magazine. It's great. It's free. It's always got like cool little stories and tips from experts, but it's really great in that it brings business owners, small business owners in the community to give advice or like they'll pro like they always have like business profiles. Why did you get into this business? You know, what made you get into this business? Why do you live here? Blah, blah, blah. And so you really get to meet the business owners behind your local coffee shop, your local auto mechanic or whatever it might be. So it really kind of ties that together with their business. And to your point, gives a unique angle on people with an expertise, um, how they can help the community. Yeah. And if nothing else, hopefully a backlink, hopefully some yeah. social proof, you know, as seen on, you know, good yeah. day Sacramento or something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you may look, you know, this is local. We, we don't do cross country moves. Is there a, you know, geographic expansion? Is there a, you know, product skew expansion? Like where do you, uh, you know, aside from just, uh, we're going to ride, we're going to ride the rising tide of interest and awareness in mm -hmm. sustainable moving box rent. So like this is a new category. This is something that, you know, more and more people become aware of it for moving or for storage. Like you're going to be a beneficiary of that. Is there anything else to like pour some gas on the fire or say hey, we're we're good with with what we get? You know, um, obviously there always is, right? We can always get more inventory, rent a bigger space, have a bigger space, get more clients. But for this particular business, I don't 
I don't anticipate us 10xing or becoming like a, you know, franchising different units or do anything like that. I mean, we have a really good name and our, our clients and community loves us. And I hope that as the population continues to grow, there's tons of more houses out here um, that we can continue to serve them. And there's, there's a more renting boxes. I'll be happy when renting boxes is more normal than buying cardboard boxes. Right. Yeah. That means that we were able to prove our concept. I don't know if or when that'll happen, but if people are like, oh, I got to rent boxes from a move and they're like, oh, yeah, where do you rent your boxes from? And that's like an actual normal conversation that happens. Then I'll be like, OK, we succeeded because we were the only ones, at least the first ones here to bring rentable moving boxes to the Sacramento area. And now it's normal. Now it's something that everybody does. And that'll be mean success. Very good. Well, I imagine you'll keep chipping away toward that goal, and I'm excited to see where you take it. It's been over a decade in the business, and sounds like it's set up to be sustainable without a lot of time investment required to keep it growing. So very cool. Gary, thanks so much for stopping by. You are the author of Financial Fives. This is the top 325 ways to save, earn, and thrive to retire before 65. You can find that at financialfives.com. The box rental business is calboxrental.com. If you want to check that out, check out what that uh, Wix site looks like, calboxrental.com. Let's wrap this thing up with your number one tip for side hustle nation the number one tip is just try just start something right do something that's going to move the needle that's all the best thing i can do because we can plan and research and talk to people but i can tell you that unless i just told myself that i'm just going to go to home depot and buy these boxes and you see that receipt and you see the box in the back of your car and sitting in your garage you're like okay i need to do something right and it's something to start that wheel turning right buy that domain name you know, reach out to somebody, whatever you need to do, create, pay somebody a hundred bucks to give you a really cool logo and slogan, whatever it means that whatever your idea is, just try something and start. Yeah. Some kind of forced action. You'll find that momentum breeds momentum. And there's some law of entrepreneurial physics where uh, an entrepreneur in motion tends to stay in motion. So it's just that, you know, that zero to one to get that motivation to go do that yeah. first thing. And here we are. 10, yeah. 12 years later, and it's become a, a really cool side hustle that you built. Uh, a couple of takeaways for me before we wrap up. Number one is obviously this focus on partnerships and relationships. Um, partnerships on the delivery and logistics side, you, know, you can think about, um, and then on the relationship side, think about that strategic partner of who are your target customers already doing business with? How can you make them? They're not a competitor, but they're an ally or potential referral source for you. We've talked about them as, you know, lead fountains instead of, you know, onesie twosie lead trickles. It's like who, who you know, who might need this service again and again and again? I really liked um, the the focus there. And then the second thing is like, well, what else could I could I rent out? Like thinking about something that checks this box, like pretty durable asset. Sure, some of them are going to break, but you know, the cost of each individual one is, is not a ton and something that could really have a, a long lifespan, long shelf life. I think that's really, um, just an interesting one and something that, uh, like you mentioned is going to be, you know, more and more people become aware of it. And so you put yourself in a good position to capture some of that demand, just like side hustle nation has captured a rising tide of interest in side hustles over the last decade. So I'm trying to, you know, see what, you know, what, what gold rush can you sell shovels into almost? And, you know, the same sustainability zero waste as like a broader umbrella, maybe mm -hmm. one of those to, uh, to look into. So like we talked about, not the only thing that you can rent out for a profit. So make sure to grab your free listener bonus for this week. That's my list of 25 other unconventional rental ideas. You may be able to borrow uh, some of Gary's playbook for on the marketing and partnership side. You can grab that for free at the show notes for this episode at sidehustlenation.com slash Gary, G-A-R-Y, or just follow the link in the episode description in your podcast player app. It'll get you right over there. Other rental episodes for consideration if you like this model. Uh, we talked about the mobility scooter guy. Love this episode. He's doing like three grand a month with a fleet of um, six or seven mobility scooters in LA. Uh, that is episode 564 with Lenny Tim. Fascinating episode. Um, you know, relatively low startup cost, relatively quick to break even, and then it's then it's gravy. Um, and then uh, 428 
you know, one of the episodes I refer people to most often, this, this is uh, Steve Nadramia with his portable hot tub rental business. And not not really that portable, but like portable compared to a, you know, a fixed, um, you know, hot tub that's not going anywhere, um, delivering these things in, in his pickup truck. And, you know, I think he had like 25 or 30 of them. Really, really cool uh, creative episode uh, on the side from his uh, teaching job. So 428 uh, on the hot tubs, 564 with Lenny on the uh, mobility scooters. But big thanks to Gary for sharing his insight. Big thanks to our sponsors for helping make this content free for everyone. You can hit up sidehustlenation.com slash deals for all the latest offers from our sponsors in one place. Thank you for supporting the advertisers that support the show. That is it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're finding value in the show, the greatest compliment is to share it with a friend. So fire off that text message. Hey, check this out. Maybe we should do this in our area. Until next time, let's go out there and make something happen. And I'll catch you in the next edition of the Side Hustle Show. Hustle on.